I ask your men, if I ask the men now to remove your shoes, those of you who are wearing stockings, remove your shoe and see the stockings you wear, torn stockings. And if your stockings are torn, it means your pants are torn. Some of you wear torn pants. True or false? You don't want to say. Because nobody, you don't know. And some of you wear color riot. Green trouser. Blue shirt. Brown shoe. Yellow belt. I think a person who calls it color blocking. You are blocked. And most of this thing that we just go and borrow from the world and we bring it into the church. I actually saw one day, one day, somebody was wearing shoes, two different shoes. This one is different from this one. In the name of what? There's one very serious, vital point that Pastor Hakim made from that scripture, Revelation 1 5. That God has made us unto himself kings and priests. Please, when you see a king, do you see king with long nails? Do you see them with red laws? Oh, this is uh, this new age oh, that are coming up. If you are coming to church, you should be. We are not saying we are not saying that you should wear expensive clothes. No, 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 no. We are not saying that you should wear expensive clothes. But let that one that you wear, let it be neat. And then one of the things that causes body odor, you see, when you finish wearing clothes, you don't air it. You carry it like that, roll it, and put it inside the wardrobe like that. It's going to smell. When you finish wearing clothes, you sun it. You put it where sun can touch it or where air can touch it before you wear it again. If you don't do that, it's going to smell. This amputee, both it is for both male and female. Girls are like that. I've seen a lot. Sometimes I just cover my eyes. Just like Pastor said, it's not it's not spiritual. It's not is it spiritual investment? It's not kingdom investment you are making. region. Take care of your... It's in the Bible. The Bible tells us in the First Corinthians chapter 12. He said those two parts of our body that are not visible, that God takes very good care of them. That is why nobody sees your inside whatever, but why do you wear pants? What about your shoe, your feet? Why do you wear shoes and stockings and all of that for your shoes? for your feet. Those parts that you feel that are not important, they are the ones where we bestow greater honor. So don't just be walking about, dressing anyhow, looking anyhow. And you are meant to be a representative or an ambassador of Christ on earth. That's part of the things we, we need to. When you are coming to church, you're coming to church because it is midweek service. You see, religious mentality. We are religious, so because it is Wednesday, you wear anything. And then on Sunday, you now dress up. 
But every day when you go to the office, you don't dress anyhow. You dress very well. And then when you want to come into the presence of God, you wear anything that you like and then come in. You can't do that. Trim your fingernails. Let it look neat, clean. Trim your nails and all. Wash it, let it be. And some of you, eh, some of you, your feet, yeah. If you put knife, you can cut some chunk of whatever you are, whatever. Take out time. Take, take care of your body. We are talking about health, good health. Take care of your body. When you want to wear clothes, wear clothes that is within the size of your body. Some of you, you started adjusting yourself because you know what I'm about to say. The shirt they are wearing, you can use it to sew too. You wear oversized clothes. Our women, sometimes, if you see the kind of thing they wear on their head in the name of wig. When you wear, come, come. Come. How does she look? Sharp. Clean. Good. Pretty. You can even be seen vision. But you are not permitted. You look, then you see the shape of her face. Eh? Somebody sees her and says, yeah, I like this hair. But it fits her because of the shape of her face. Then another person will now see her and then carry this one. Maybe your face is round. You carry this one and put on. You know how you are going to look like? Baboon. You won't look, and they won't tell you. So you, you wear your whatever based on the shape of your, because what suits her, what fits her will not fit you. Look at her now. Is she not looking excellent? Courtesy of Even though he's believing God for. <laughs> so you see, these are the things when you see, you like it. And these are the things, and this, some of you, because our women are complaining, they complain about men, what they actually, some of us are smelling. And you know when you smell, it's a very personal thing that nobody can tell you. It's very, very personal. If somebody's mouth is smelly, will you be able to tell, even if he's your friend? Where would you tell the person? Because you don't want, he's very personal. He's personal person. You can't say that. And then you'll be smelling and nobody will tell you. Your clothes will be smelling. Some of them, when they come near me, they, it's, it's because I have just developed a hard heart. There was one that was just talking. Thank you very much. Eh? You God bless you. There was one that was just talking to me, and uh, the thing was oozing out. Eh? I took all the, all the grace that God has given to me. I was just out breathing like this, eh? I look at like this, I, I, I breathe out and I talk because I can't, I can't tell the person to go. I just have to stand and took everything. When he finally left, I took a, a sigh of relief. I was struggling how to tell him that you are smelling, but he's, he looks very embarrassing. That's how a lot of us are. It's not good. Don't, this thing that you do with your hair, clean your hair, look neat and sharp. Amen. Cleanly 
holiness, they say. What about the place where you live? When, when I come to church, hmm, when I step into the church, I see people that are inside the church before I come. Sometimes it's in the hall. Sometimes it's even, even, it's even in my office and all that. I already know how your inside is. That is how your heart is. What is going on in your... By the way you are, by the way you, how your environment is. If your environment is dirty and scattered and all of that, and you are not interested, you didn't know, you don't care. That's how your inside is. See, there are things you know. The Bible said those who through exercise, who through training has exercised them, themselves to discern good and what? Evil. It's not that the Holy Ghost is telling me. It's discernment that comes through the studying of the Bible. It is not just like Pastor Aki said. It is not, you can come into the church with a ring on your nose and one on your ears and one on top and then have a ring inside your tongue. I don't know how they do that one. Pierce their tongue and put a ring inside and put on this. You can come to church like that. There's no problem. I don't have any problem with you. You can come with all types of uh, dreadlocks and all of that. I don't have any problem with you. You can come with torn jeans and all of that. I don't have any problem. But where I have problem is that after you have stayed a while and God has touched you and all of that. Because see, the moment the Spirit of God enters you, I told you a story about what happened to me when I told a brother that I drink because after I got born again, I was drinking. Before I got born again, I was a drunkard. And some of you think, you say, yes, of course I know. Yes, you know. Even you yourself, your own. Some of you might even be worse than me. But I was a drunkard. And I smoke. So I got born again. I was still drinking. I was still smoking. Pastor. Yes. Drink, smoke, big time. I met a brother. I told him. He said, there's nothing wrong with me smoking and drinking. Ah. Because I respected that brother a lot. He said, I said, say what you said again. He said, there's nothing wrong. He smiled. He's a very quiet guy. He smiled, he chuckled. I said, just drink, just smoke, there's no problem. I was so happy. I was so excited. When I was about to go, he said, but wait. He said, there is one thing that he's asking me to do. That I should promise him that I will do it. I said, tell me anything I will do it. As long as I will go ahead, smoke and drink. He said, make sure you study your Bible. Make sure you're always in a fellowship. Attend all the fellowship meetings. Make sure you pray. As long as you are doing all this, just go ahead and smoke and drink. I thanked him. From that meeting I had with him, I went straight to the joint where I smoke and drink. I had a good time. <laughs> and I continued. But I was attending fellowship. And when I came, and when I, you say, make sure you come, you come on time and pay attention, study your Bible, do all those things. If you can do that, I don't have any problem with you, start smoking. So I started. That's why you hear me say that since I got born again till I left school, I never missed one fellowship. It was from that guy. Guess what? It wasn't up to two weeks. The desire, the hunger to smoke and to drink died. 
I was now forcing myself to drink. I was forcing myself to smoke. But it wasn't working. Sometimes I will go to the beer and I say, what kind of rubbish is it? I will sit and say, Madam, give me my TG, Golden Guinea, territory. I'll drop it, I'll open it, pour it inside the glass. I'll take it to drink like it's like something, the taste and all of that. The beer now that used to be, you know, when you start drinking, initially it will be very bitter. Hmm? But when you have mastered it, that beer will be like Coke when you drink it. Am I talking to somebody? <laughs> I'm suspecting you guys. <laughs> So somewhere along the line, I wanted to drink this in no way. The thing became very bitter. I dropped the bottle, dropped the glass, dropped everything I left. That was how the whole thing ended. From inside. From inside. It was controlled from inside. The man inside doesn't want it. So that is why I am convinced so the same way, when you dress, see, you can tell, you know, you know, security people, when you get to the airport and all of that, you know how all these well-trained security guys, you know how they detect people and they will call you out and single you out. When they look at you, they look at your dressing, look at the way you carry yourself and all of that, they will tell you to come, step aside. Do you know why policemen, when you stay, when you are inside the car and you are, you, you are wearing dread rock, dreadlocks and you wear those, your jeans and all of that and then wear black goggle in the morning. Sometimes in the evening you wear goggle. Wear all those. And then with face cap and then you are driving. The police will say, stop, stop. You look down, he will see you. You look the other one, you see. Look at he said, pack well. All of you come down. They will start searching. But if you are dressed like success or dressed like this young man, they will greet you. The police will say, Good afternoon, sir. But you can't see the person wearing tattered well, torn jeans and all that. Say, Good afternoon, sir. Why? There is something about dressing. Do you know that when you, there is a dress, there is a way you dress, you feel uncomfortable. Hello? Does it happen to you? You wear some things, you are not, you don't like the way you are body. Why? Because it doesn't fit your personality. Then you go and change it. You go and remove it. And then I want to beg our women. Sometimes, eh? Uh, women can be powerful. Some of the things they wear sometimes. When I see it, I tell my wife. When I go home, I tell my wife, I say, please, please. I've told her several about some, certain people. And when I come back, sometimes there was one day actually I came back, I was shouting at her. And I was sorry, I was shouting at her. I said, but this thing, how can this person be wearing this kind of dress? Dress your grandmother wore. They gave you. And some is, so, there are some dresses that you're supposed to wear inside your house. Not that, some of these, um, what do they call them again? Leggings. Skin tight. When they, wear, they bring out all your features out, is nude. It's not good. It's not good. It's indecent. Stop. And those of you who are wearing, you know how much it costs to wear dreadlocks and to maintain it. Some of you, you wear it, you don't maintain it. It smells. I'm not saying that you are only between you and Jesus Christ, but I, I wonder as, um, and those of you who wear tattoos on your body, you look at them, tattoos everywhere, tattoos everywhere, the whole of their body. 
Tomorrow, somebody will ask me whether it's a sin. How many priests and kings have you seen wearing tattoos? Hello. Please, I want you to remember that you are a member of the kingdom of God. You are a member of Zion, that you are a Zionist. There is a culture, there is a way they live, there is a way they dress, there is a way they comport themselves. All the things we have learned and all of that, put them into practice. It's the same thing that I learned. It was one day in those days in the church in the Dominion City. We organize it. We, there will be a meeting. A pastor will organize a meeting and all of that. And we'll invite somebody and pay the person to come and talk about grooming. The way you take care of yourself and all of that. Because there is one guy, one part, one that same person that got purpose, uh, my pastor called to come and give a talk on grooming and all. Every time you see that guy, he doesn't have a car. Every time you see that guy, he's clean to a fault, and he tracks. But any time you see him, you see, wow. It was the day he was now talking to us that he was giving us the secret. How he looked the way he looked. He would trek and trek and trek, go and looking for contract. By the time he finished trekking, his shoes everywhere would be there. He said he has two handkerchiefs in his pocket. One is for cleaning his shoes. And one is for cleaning his face. Some of you, your faces are oily faces. And when you don't take care of it, you stand before somebody, you're looking like a Tilapia. Tilapia fish. They battered your face. Amen. Amen. This is why some of you, you grow up like this as a young lady. You get married. You'll be dressing like your grandmother in your marriage, you wonder why your husband is not looking in your direction. Sometimes he's our man. You dress like uh, is he in there, me? You dress like hippopotamus. And then you wonder why your wife is always embarrassed. They are clean. There are women that are quite exceptional when you see them. You know, hello, hello. You think I don't see, you think I don't have eyes. You think this I don't see things that are good. You think so? I see beautiful ladies. Yes, pretty. I admire them. I take them, I look at them. In fact, I will go and have handshakes. I won't tell them because it's good. I don't lose every. I don't lose after any woman. Never, never. I don't have any business. That one is not my. I don't care what you think. I don't have one single loss. But when I see somebody who ha, who is clean, who is decent, I look at them. Sometimes I go out of my way to greet them to encourage them. I may not tell them. I say you are looking good. And when I tell you that you are looking good, it means you are looking good. It means you, like, you look like a princess in your outfit, in your dress. It shows what is inside. It's not about whether you have money to buy clothes or you don't have money. You can have one, two, three clothes. As a matter of fact, I'm having recently, what I did was I entered my wardrobe. I cleaned every single thing. I packed, I was packing, I was packing, I was packing, pack it, load. I brought it here. None of those clothes that I brought here that I'm not using, I see use them, including my footwear. You know why? Because one day, one day, I wanted to go to church. I came, I picked this one, I wore it. I now remove it, I now went and checked this one. 
was doing. While I was doing this one, trying to see the one that will match and the one that will fit, that the one that will. By the time I looked at the time, it was quarter to the time for the fellowship or for the service, church service. So I dropped everything, wore what I wore like that. I entered car, I was speeding on the road. I just come one minute before the time. I was very angry with myself. I said, what is it? Because I used to remember those days when I don't have clothes. I never had any problem about what to wear or what not to wear. All I do, because my, my whatever, I have worn this one today, tomorrow is this one. So however you look, it doesn't matter. I just wear it. And nobody complained. I was looking for it. Now that I have plenty trousers, plenty shirt, plenty t-shirt, and everything, the dressing now became a problem for me. And I asked myself again, when have I become a woman? Because women, that is right. Because they, but my wife and all of that, they know, my children, they know how they do their own. If they are going to go to maybe like BTS, BTS or Tuesday, by Saturday, Saturday, they have single brought out my wife. You see, he said this one before Tuesday, ahead of time. So that day you just come and wear it. But I won't be doing like that. So what I do is, uh, that is why the more you simplify your life, the better for you. Simplicity. Don't come. You hear me say, I don't like things that are complicated. Don't complicate things. Make them very easy and very simple. It will take you, you will go far. This grooming stuff is very, 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 very. There are a couple of us men, when you look at them, they are very neat. They are very clean and very tidy. But there are those. And then some of our men, some of our men are very clean. When you look at them, they are clean and always on point. But when you look at their wives, they are not. So the question is, why are you not interested in your wife? It's not about having many clothes. That one that you have, one, two, three, keep them clean. If you have money, send them to dry clean. If you don't have money, wash them by yourself. Iron them and put them together. If you are faithful in that which is little, God will increase you by himself. Amen. 